Hi, my name is Katie Martin, and today we are going to be stitching the mushroom patch pattern. And let's go over our materials. We have one of my Harvest Goods oval hoops, DMC floss, some gorgeous dusty rose linen from Terra Textilia that I love, a friction pen. This is very important for this project. Some snips, any snips will do, and a size 5 embroidery needle. So in your kit, you will have the pattern to trace onto your fabric, and then I will flip the fabric over and warp it, which means I get it as tight as I can get it. It should be tight enough that when you tap it, it sounds like a drum. And then go ahead and trim off the excess edges of the fabric, and then we are ready to get stitching. So we're gonna jump right in, and the first thing we're going to do is whip back stitch the stems with one strand of the dark green floss you can see me pull out the floss it's super easy and i love to do this by just back stitching a whole section and then going back and whipping that section and you want to stitch all the way into the veins of the leaves as well this just adds a bit of texture and interest to your piece this is one of my favorite stitches ever i have a tutorial on my instagram page if you want more in depth well, next we're gonna stitch these cute little strawberries and i'm starting with the really tiny ones i'm using three strands of the red and i'm filling the really small ones in with a satin stitch I'm making sure to tie off at the end of every berry as I move around because this is such a complex piece and there are a lot of layers. It's good to get in the habit of tying off. And so you see with the really tiny strawberries, I just sat and stitched them and I layered a few stitches to make them puffy. But then with the larger strawberries, I'm doing something called padded satin stitch. So I'm back stitching around the edge of the strawberry. I will satin stitch over this because the berries are so small, you don't need to fill them in first. So we have our strawberries all stitched up and they're looking a little flat. So take one strand of your yellow and add seed stitches in each berry and follow the natural curve of the berry. So you can see here, I'm not just filling them with stitches that are completely vertical. I'm more following an organic shape here. It's It does not have to be perfect, of course, because no strawberry is. And I like to add more at the bottom of the strawberry. So now we're gonna move on to leaflets. I'm using two strands of the light green here and I'm stitching the tops of the berries and the very small leaves. And then I'm gonna move on with the same color to the larger leaves. And you can see here that I am stitching guidelines so I can keep my angles correct. And then I will fill in between each guideline. And I am stitching first the outermost points of the strawberry leaves because they're not super smooth. And then I'm, I'm stitching the inner parts of the leaf. And I really like to focus on one half of the leaf at a time. And once you have all of that filled in, I just go back with one more strand of the dark green and add in detail stitches you can see I'm just stitching right on top in generally the same direction as the base stitches these are really really subtle also totally optional but I think they give the piece a lot of fun depth this again just I think adds depth and texture and makes the embroidery so much more interesting Okay, next we are moving on to the flowers. And the petals of the flowers are just simple, long and short stitch. I'm using two strands of the white floss here. You could also simply satin stitch the petals if you would like as well. But I'm leaving a little space at the base of each petal just to add a contrasting color to give it a little more dimension and a little more interest because these mushrooms are so detailed that I wanted the rest of the piece to have good dainty details and this is certainly one way to achieve that. So once you have all of the petals stitched, I'm going back through with one strand of the very light pink and just filling in the base of each petal closest to the floral center with that a few stitches of that light pink. And I think this really rounds it out, gives it a bit more dimension, a bit more interest. 
So finally we are going to fill in the center of the flower. I'm just satin stitching the center. You can tell I'm not being very precise with it and you don't have to get right up to the edges because we're going to add a lot of little French knots around it. So I'm using one strand of the yellow here and I'm just going to add tons and tons of French knots. You can see that in part of these French knots I'm adding a little bit of a stem to them. That just means that I'm pulling the French knot away from right beside where I pulled my needle through. You don't have to do this. You could just do normal French knots as well. But just fill that space around the base of the petals with a bunch of French knot. And don't forget the other flower as well. So now we're going to go ahead and move on to the mushroom. My favorite part, I'm using three strands of the white floss and long and short stitch to fill in the stem of the mushrooms. This does not have to be perfect because we're actually going to add in a lot of detail stitches over it. So don't stress about it being super perfectly smooth. It really doesn't need to be. And you can see here I'm using one strand of the really light pink and I'm adding some stitches around the base of the gills. This is just to add shadow and depth and I'm also going to be adding them throughout the stem. This also gives the long and short stitch a more smooth finish in my opinion. So you can see I added those stitches all throughout the stem and especially around the strawberry as well. And now I'm using two strands of the white floss to fill in the outside edge of the gills. You can see that I'm leaving the inside edge bare. That's because I'm going to use one strand of the light pink floss and I'm going to long and short stitch these gills. So the outer edge of the gills will be white and the inner edge, you'll use one strand of the pink and stitch them in. And again, this just is adding depth and dimension and interest. You can see on the bigger mushroom where I already stitched the gills, what it should look like. You can leave a little bit of space in between each gill because we will stitch in between the gills. So here I'm using one strand of the light brown floss and I am split stitching small lines in between each gill. This just adds more shadows and makes sure every single gill is differentiated. So here I am adding one strand stitches in the very dark brown. I'm adding these around the base of the ring. You can see that I'm just adding these straight stitches at the base of the ring really to give it a bit more shadow. And then also where the ring and the gills meet, I am stitching a few stitches around there. Again, just to add a little bit more shadow and a little bit more interest, I'm still just using one strand of that light brown floss and I'm actually stem stitching this but you could also split stitch it and then now I'm using two strands of the light brown and I'm doing a padded satin stitch for the gills you can see I just added the padding at the bottom of the gills and then I satin stitched it and now I'm going to do a padded long and short stitch for the mushrooms and again these are for the mushroom caps and these are only padded at the base of the cap as well. So really I'm just trying to add dimension to where the roundest or most outstanding parts of the mushroom would be. And so here I'm using long and short stitch with the light brown floss to fill in the mushroom cap and I am avoiding the spots because they will be a different color. Right now I'm just putting in my guideline stitches, you can see, and then I will fill in in between these stitches. These stitches are really just to help me with my angles and make sure that my angles are changing as I work across the mushroom. With this month's kit, we're really focusing on bringing dimension to our pieces and detail. So this one is quite a bit more advanced than any of the other ones we've done this year, but I love the techniques in this, and these are ones that I rely on so much in my embroidery practice. So go ahead and just fill in that mushroom cap with your long and short stitch, but don't forget to avoid the spots. And make sure you fill in the caps on both mushrooms, and then we're going to fill in the spots. So I am using one strand of the white floss and I am putting down 
just a bit of stem stitch around the exposed edges of the spot so the spots on the farthest edge of the mushroom this is just to very slightly pad them and then i'm going ahead and stitching my guide stitches again this is just to keep the angles correct and then I'm going ahead and I'm filling in those spaces in between each of my guide stitches. This doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to actually add in some light pink floss in here as well. So just roughly fill in each spot with the white floss and allow your stitches to overlap the brown stitches. This will give the white stitches just as much dimension as the brown ones. So once you've filled in your spots with all of the white, go ahead and use one strand of the very light pink floss and add some stitches at the bottom of each spot. So you can see I'm focusing only on the bottom. I don't add these stitches throughout the spots or anything. You totally could, but the point was really to give it a little more volume at the bottom of each spot and provide a little bit of shadowing at the bottom of each spot. So I will go back and do this on every single little white spot on both of these mushrooms. And I'm adding quite a bit of work around the ring. And then also I focus a lot on the edge of the cap where the cap meets the gills of the mushroom. You can see I'm adding a lot of little straight stitches here on this part of the cap. This is my absolute favorite part of the project where I go back and add the little detail stitches that seriously make all of the difference. I really, 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 really loved creating this piece. And so if you look closely, you can see also that I added a lot of little French knots on the cap and on the ring. And now I'm just using one strand of the light brown floss and I'm just adding a bit more detail onto the stem. And you can also see that I used a few sporadic stitches in the really dark brown to add spots to the stems as well. So again, of course, I've said it so many times, I'm just adding shadows and dimension. And finally, this is me using three strands of the light green and I am stitching the base of the grass so like the background of the grass and then I'm going back with one strand of the dark green and stitching detail strands of grass over it to make it a little more dainty and then with my leftover brown floss I am just adding in a few French knots and seed stitches and finally with two strands of the yellow floss or any color you would like. I'm adding these tiny seed stitches all around the piece, which I love so much. Finally, all you have to do is back your hoop however you'd like and you are done. Look at that detail. I hope you loved this project because I certainly loved creating it. Until next time.